And um, now there are a number of pastors in West Africa. They have done their homework and they were doing quite well. So I hope here too in East Africa that you're doing well too. And the message is God's grace and warning to motivate us to turn away from sins. Now, some people think that to help people to turn away from their sins, they have to yell at people or they have to just use the law and say, you have to do this, you must do this, or God will punish you. Uh, so people think that they have to use uh, the law only to motivate people to change. And I want to say that um, you know, the biblical teaching is that the grace of God is the greatest motivation. The grace of God is the motiva most important motivation. But we also have the law to remind us and to warn us if we don't obey uh, the law. Uh, so, you know, the main motivation should be that God loves me so much, therefore I want to obey God. Okay, so that should be the main motivation. Okay, now please, if you can see me, please let me know with WhatsApp. Okay, and God bless you. Okay, now here I have a few items here and I want to go through this freely. Okay, now if we want to motivate people not to tell lies, uh, what can we do? Now, uh, I have talked about the, the outline of a, a message and the suggested outline is that first there is an interpretation of the a biblical passage and then there is negative and positive example to tell people of those people who don't obey God and, and those people who obey God and what will uh, happen. Um, and then God's nature and, and grace is how God's nature, His qualities and His grace will motivate us to obey Him. And then why? Why some people don't obey? And then uh, reminder and warning. What will happen if people don't obey? Let me say this again. So God's grace and warning to motivate us to turn away from sins that God's nature and grace should be our main motivation to motivate us to obey God. And even when we want to tell people to turn away from their sins, when we want to turn people away from their sins, we want to use grace as the main motivation. And here we have a few items that I will first talk about and then I will talk about different passages. And uh, so now let me go through the outline that I would like you to do. To, uh, to use. Now actually I can show you the outline here that this outline is a practical outline. A, an outline, each point has its point and reason. First, interpretation of the biblical passage. We want to explain the passage. Explain it word by word, phrase by phrase. Of course the important words that we want people to understand the biblical passage. And then examples of how people don't live out and do live out this particular nature of God. And we'll, we'll look at that, how some people don't obey and some people do obey and live out God's nature. And then God's nature and grace would be the main motivation that He is so beautiful, His nature is so wonderful. Uh, Okay, I have started already. I have started already. Okay, and then why some people don't live out this particular nature of God and why? The emphasis here is why. Why some people don't follow God's way. Uh, the reason why we want to talk about the why is so that people understand that when uh, the, the reason behind uh, uh, the fact that they don't obey God so that they know the reason and then so they can take care of that problem. And then reminder and warning from God's commandment that when we disobey God, there will be uh, bad consequences. There can be destruction to our life. And then how to live out this particular nature of God and then challenge to people. Okay, So we'll go back 
uh, to here. So if we want to write uh, messages about uh, diff these different topics, okay, not to tell a lie. Okay, now uh, the negative and positive example of people are, you know, there are some people who, for instance, some people who serve God and they, they, they really are diligent, they do a lot of things, but then when some Christians discover that they are telling lies, that they are not really doing what they are doing, or when they are cheating on money, or when they are sinning, they're doing something in secret. They're not telling the lie. Uh, they're not telling the truth. They're telling lies. What will happen? What will happen is that then the people would, you know, would say, I cannot trust that person anymore because he's telling lies. He's not telling the truth. So that's, this is a negative example of people, of, uh, people who tell lies. And then positive examples that there are people who really tell the truth all the time. They always tell the truth, even if the truth will bring them trouble. For instance, they have done something wrong and then they will admit it totally. Then that is a good example. And people will say, well, this is a wonderful person. Now, what I'm telling you is, not, is that it's not so hard to do the assignment uh, to fulfill the requirement I suggest. And after you do 10 assignments satisfactory, uh, satisfactory assignment, then I can give you the first level certificate. So, and then uh, God's nature and grace, okay? So when we look at this quality, now telling a lie is the negative uh, quality, is a sin. And then the positive would be the opposite. What is the opposite? The opposite is tell the truth all the time and tell the truth in love. Tell the truth so that it will help people, that will strengthen people and glorify God. That, that is um, God. He always tell the truth and He always give people uh, uh, hope. He doesn't, you know, He, he always gives, gives hope to people. So when He tells the truth, I'm going to help you. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to give you strength. I'm going to raise your life up to a high level. He is telling the truth. And so we trust God because He has been so trustworthy in all His promises, in all His prophecies. He has always fulfilled His prophecy. So we know that God is trustworthy. So that is His nature and His grace. He, he always blesses us with His word of promise and He would also change the lives of people. He would work in the hearts of people so that they will tell the truth. So it's God who, who gives people the quality to tell the truth. It's God who, excuse me, it's God who changed people's lives so that they will tell the truth. So that is the nature of God, that God is a God who motivates people to tell the truth, okay? And so that is his nature. And also when people tell the truth, God is very happy. God will bless the person. God will uh, make the, the person's life go higher and higher. He will use that person. So that's God's nature and grace. He, he's happy with people who tell the truth and he will motivate Christians to tell the truth. Now it's very important that we can talk about how God motivates us. That since we became a Christian, the Holy Spirit lives in us because the, uh, the Holy Spirit is holy. So when He lives in us, He will tell us about our sins. He will tell us to obey Him and that will give us motivation. The Holy Spirit will continue to remind us. And then if we are about to tell a lie, then the Holy Spirit will convict us of our sin and we'll feel bad because of our, uh, our intention to tell a lie. And then we will, you know, in the heart we have the conviction of the Holy Spirit. And if we obey the Holy Spirit and say, Lord, yes, I want to obey you. I don't want to tell a lie. I want to tell the truth. Then God is very happy and He will give us joy and He will give us strength to tell the truth. And then when we tell the truth, He will bless us. Okay, so that's God's great nature and grace. And uh, He has given Christians courage to tell the truth, even when they are persecuted, they are really put into 
big trouble where they are persecuted for Jesus' sake and yet they still tell the truth and say, Jesus is the Savior, Jesus is God, I want to trust in God all the time and God loves you and I care about you too. There are some Christians who continue to, to uh, tell the truth even when they are persecuted and even if they are threatened with, with uh, punishment or death. Okay, and then reminder and warning. Satan is the father of liars. So if we tell lies, then we are calling Satan our father and then uh, the, Satan will control the person. So the warning is that if we tell lies, then we become a, ch a child of Satan. We don't want to become a child of Satan. So we, you know, we want to tell the truth. And also if a person tell the truth and I mean tell a lie and doesn't repent, he can lose his salvation. If he continue to tell lies and, and he doesn't repent, he can lose his salvation. Now, what if some people says, some people say, well, how about if a person tell, a li tell lies and then he repents and then Jesus forgives him and then he tell lies again later. So, uh, so what will happen to him? Okay, so they say, well, he tell lies and then he will repent and then God will forgive him. So he think that it's okay to tell lies. But I want to say this. There are, always, there are always consequences of sin. When people continue to tell lies, God would not like him. God would not have favor upon him and God would not bless him. And people will lose trust in him. People will say, I don't know whether I can trust this person. And people will say, I cannot trust him because he tells lies. And then if he's serving God, the people don't trust him. His ministry will not go well. So if people think that, well, I tell lies and then I will uh, ask God to forg forgive me, then it will be okay. No, it's not okay because sins are destructive. Sins are destructive. There will be destruction coming from our sins. So this is warning. And if a person continues to tell lies, he can lose his salvation. Okay, and then um, how? How can we tell the truth? Okay, now it's very important that we learn to to teach people how. And the way to teach people how is to observe our life. Observe how we tell lies. Now, I have told lies before and now I, I don't want to tell any lie at all. I want to tell the truth all the time even if there are serious consequences because I know that God will not like that and there will be serious consequences. So I've noticed that when I want to tell a lie that in my heart, I would have the intention that I would want to escape some punishment and then I want to tell a lie. But the Holy Spirit would move in the heart, in my heart and tell me not to tell the lie and I would feel very uncomfortable. I would feel guilty. And so the Holy Spirit continues to work in my life. And then what can we do? What we can do is we'll say, Yes, Lord, I know that it's not right to tell a lie. Please forgive me. So we, when we realize we have an intention to tell a lie, then we ask God to forgive us and then we'll to, uh, get, ask God to give us strength and then we'll say, I choose to tell the truth and trust that God will bless me. I trust that God will bless me when I tell the truth. So I am not afraid to tell the truth. So that is... Uh, the internal process, how to turn our heart from telling a lie to telling the truth. So we tell ourselves, so we talk to ourselves. I understand we have an intention to tell a lie and I know that is destructive. Therefore, I pray and say, Lord, please help me to walk according to your way. And I want to be pleased, be pleasing to you. I want to, uh, to be following you faithfully. Please help me that I choose to tell the truth. So that is a very important how. And also there are other ways that to meditate on the Word of God to see how people, they don't tell the truth and then what will happen to them and how God it will be happy with people who tell the truth. And also think about the past, how God has changed our lives, how He has worked in our lives and we say, yes, I want to, I want to do things that is pleasing to God. I don't want to offend God at all. Okay. And then challenge. Okay, challenge is saying, well, uh, 
all people have the sometimes have the tendency to want to tell a lie but this would cause God to be very unhappy so when we understand that we'll say Lord please help me please help me not to tell lies please help me to tell the truth to trust in God to obey God so that I won't tell a lie so that I will tell the truth and then God will help me okay so I'm I'm showing you how it's not so difficult to write an outline uh, to write a sermon uh, following my way uh, this way is not just my way it's also a biblical way because it every part of it has to do with the biblical teaching how to motivate people to tell the truth okay now let me go through this very uh, quickly okay to tell the truth and then so we interpret the passage if the passage is that you know that uh, Satan is the father of those who tell lies of the liars then we say um, you know that the passage says that if a person tell lies then Satan becomes his father Satan will have control over his life he's following Satan's way and and God doesn't like that and also uh, when we sin what happened is Satan will come to steal kill and destroy and destroy the whole person Satan would come to destroy the whole person so that interpret the, the passage that when we tell lies that the person become a child of Satan and the, we don't want to become a child of Satan because Satan will only come to destroy and then examples of people who tell lies and they lose the faith of other people and examples of people who tell the truth and then they get the respect of people and then God's nature he is holy there is no darkness in him he is totally holy he he only tell the truth and his truth is filled with love his truth is filled with his promises he will always bless people who follow him so he promised that and it comes true when we follow God he will bless us so that is his nature and his his uh, grace now it's very important to talk about how God changes people so when we are born again the Holy Spirit comes to live in our heart and when the Holy Spirit comes to live in our heart, we'll feel joy and strength and motivation and holiness. Uh, anyone who sincerely believes in Jesus, they will experience this change. When they sincerely repent of their sins and believe that there is a God, that God is real, and start to read the Bible, they will find that God will work in their life. They become a born-again Christian. And then when they are born again, the Holy Spirit will continue to talk to him, to tell him to tr tell the truth and not to tell lies. And whenever he tells lies, he will feel very uncomfortable. The Holy Spirit will convict him of his sin. And so the Holy Spirit will work in our heart to change us, to change us so that we will obey him and, and um, tell the truth. And also when we tell the truth, God is very happy and he will bless our life. He will give us blessing on earth now and also in forever in the future. And he will raise us up. He will use our life. So um, that's God's nature and grace. And then why do some people still tell lies? Because they want to run away from trouble because they've done something wrong. They think that telling a lie is the best way out or they want to get some benefit, some benefit by telling lies, but that is very destructive. And also some people just, you know, tell lies for fun. Some people gossip about other people for fun to tell lies about other people. And then reminder and warning that God um, warns us. If we tell lies, we can become the child of Satan and God doesn't like that. And there will be, um, uh, that uh, Satan, will, Satan will come to steal, kill, and destroy. And then how? So we pay attention to our inner life, how we have the tendency to tell lies, and then we'll say, this is destructive. If I tell lies, it's destructive. And then I pray to God for strength and for forgiveness. Please give me strength so that I will choose to tell the truth, and I trust that God will bless me when I tell the truth. And then um, how, how do I, I mean, how, uh, I'm sorry, challenge to people that we challenge to people and say, 
that when you tell the truth, God is happy with you. Can you start to change your life? Okay, and and tell the truth all the time, and then and then you you are free in your conscience. A free conscience is a free gift. It's a big gift. Then we'll be happy all the time. Then we'll be saying, "Wow, God is with me. God is blessing me," and then we'll feel very. Uh, very happy all the time. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> now we go to the next one, lust. Now I'm going to show you the next slide so that you can see how I go through this point so that it's easier for you to follow, to lust. Okay, so if we follow this outline, there is a passage that says that he who sows the flesh will reap destruction. 